Welcome to the K-Files. Today we are investigating the very first monster of the week of all time, the Squeeze. Welcome back to the Lush Basement Office. Thank you for joining us here on the K-Files again. I'm Katie. I'm Kuzali, and we're coming at you from hollywoodx.com. Yeah, we're talking about Monster of the Week inaugural episode, Squeeze. Eugene Victor Toombs. We are uh, coming to the midpoint here in our uh, investigation, early investigation into serial killers in 2017. Um, and uh, so I think it's a great time to hit Mr. Toombs. Squeezy squeeze. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to be very serious. I'm trying. I can't do it when she does that. It's adorable, dude. It's just... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Lots of affection for Eugene Victor Toombs. Yeah, the creepy dude. Totally. Played by oh, a man. very young Doug Ooh. Hutchinson. So this was very early days <laughs> on the show. The Only the third episode of the entire series, The X-Files, in all of history. Early days. Very oh early days. God. Uh, written by a dynamic duo, Morgan and Wong, who right out the gate are hitting it hard. Um, yeah, those guys are messing <laughs> around, man. Like, yeah. They've given us a lot of darkness, um, but uh, Mr. Toombs, I think, is uh, one of my favorite monsters that they've given us. One of my favorite of the Morgan and Wong creations. Uh, he's a pretty spectacular monster and yeah. a really um, different type of serial killer than we see. He's a human serial killer, but he's not quite human either. He's no. monstrous in he doesn't age. scientific ways. <laughs> he has really good skin, apparently. Like, <laughs> so 30 years and still looks that... So the, so the so the story of Mr. God, Tombs. No. Mr. Tombs. Mr. Tombs is a monster. Um, Mulder refers to him as a 20th century mutant, and we get very subtle hints from the Morgan and Wong team about what he actually comes to represent on the show. Mm -hmm. On the on this sh on the show, Monster of the Week episodes always give us windows into the characters and also uh, ventilate some fun. big truth that helps us move forward in some way. And in this episode, they, it's very subtle. Toombs is really subtle with, with the monster that he is, what he represents. Yes. And <clears throat> so uh, we get a, a clue in, uh, for example, the, um, I forget the character's name, but he's the old guy who investigated the Toombs case in the 60s. Oh, the original officer? Yeah, um, Briggs, I think his character's name is. Briggs, maybe. And uh, he, he gives us a clue. He talks about what he thinks Toombs is, and he expresses that, uh, you know, he, when he went into the apartment, he felt like the death, and, and yeah, he, he, committed... felt, um, he felt like a death akin to, like, the My Lai massacre, like, um, like a terrible genocide. He, um, and also, uh, the art department gives us a clue, and I, I'm certain that Morgan and Wong probably uh, did this specifically also. Um, we also see he's reading a newspaper that has something about ethnic cleansing. So you, yes. you get, you start to understand that like there is some kind of, um, uh, blood at work here, some kind of violence mm -hmm. that has uh, created this mutant, this 20th century mutant, a mutant of ethnic cleansing, a mutant of, um, uh, you know, violence against humans, uh, committed by other humans. And so, um, the other and the other really cool clue that I love um, that uh, I, I, I'm I'm certain was on purpose from the writers is in Chinese medicine uh, the organs are very important and if an organ is out of balance then that creates a emotional response in the body. Um, so if your, for example, if your liver is out of balance, you are uh, known to exhibit frequent angers, angry outbursts. Um, like uh, mood swings, bitterness, really uh, like extreme bitterness, like 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 really a potent anger. So um, if you consider that element, then you can see that Tombs is is an, he's an anger monster. He's a monster who is a predator who feeds on bile, who feeds on the liver, who feeds on the that that element. And you see the people that he finds to eat too. That's another really cool clue to this. You see the people he picks out to eat. Everybody he looks that he looks at and and he uh, thinks looks pretty tasty, and we don't get to see it in this episode. But uh, it, we're gonna do, of course, we're gonna f finish Mr. Toombs' story in the follow up episode um, next week. Um, Toombs, this is Squeeze. Next is Toombs, and <laughs> and um, and in that episode, you you start to see. We'll talk about it more, but you see how he sees and he the people that he uh, wants to eat are in like full color, like really bright color, and everybody else looks black and white. 
But um, so you start to see like what they look like to him, but what they are to us, uh, you can you can start to kind of pick out too. The first guy who dies, Usher, is a, a businessman. He's working late. He's obviously affluent. And uh, and then the the I think the really telling case is at the very end the house that Tombs breaks into. Oh, this might be in Tombs actually. Nope, this is in the sequel. Too bad. We'll we'll get there next week. Um, but uh, but you can see the people he. I'll, I'll get to the point though. The people he attacks, the people he wants to eat, are affluent people, people who uh, are angry, people who are workaholics, people who choose work over family. So there's an imbalance there of some kind that is reflecting this sort of uh, like power. And there's some sense that it, it has to do with people are dying, people are suffering while there is, you know, this other element. And so like it's uh, and, and the people who are 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 suffering, the ethnic cleansing, for example, are people who are less powerful being oppressed by mm-hmm. people who are more powerful. So I think it has something to do with that. I think it I think there's some message here about when those in power and enact their power over those with less power, that there's some uh, terrible ventilation that has to happen. And that ventilation takes the form of a monster like Tombs who's coming to eat your liver and he can get into any house, no matter how high tech your security system is. I, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's I think it's a really interesting Morgan Morgan and Wong do this all the time. In their episode in the most recent batch of episodes in season 10 they did this with the band-aid nose monster Mm -hmm. he came for those people who were uh dealing with the homeless problem in their town in um less than uh altruistic ways less than just ways one might argue i guess (laughs) well morgan wong might argue they seem to be suggesting that this type of behavior not that it's not that it's bad or immoral, simply that this type of behavior has violent consequences. I think maybe that's the bottom line here. Like, whatever moral conclusions you would like to draw, x file says that if you put into our field of time here something violent, something violent is coming back around for you. And frequently on the X-Files, it's a scary monster that is like a horrible nightmare creature. Yeah. So it's a fate worse than death, some might say. Not on the X Files. On the X Files, it's just another cool episode. But uh, I, I love uh, Tombs. He's one of my favorite monsters, and I think, like I said, one of the coolest Morgan and Wong creations. I think he's on a par with there with like the mom, the inbred mom from Home. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a good episode, actually. <laughs> These are really, really. Yeah, there's no uh, bad episode yet on the X Files, actually. They're they're great pieces of writing because they hit you really hard with uh, shocking violence, with, with yeah. ba- bouts of shocking violence. They don't hold back. And then, but there are these really deep messages uh, running underneath. You know, we always talk about the invisible world of the X-Files, the supernatural part of the X-Files is this other part of the story. And I, I just think when you're watching a Morgan and Wong episode, even if you're not aware of it on a conscious level, you feel it in your guts. Like you feel, and, and I have to. I have to also give credit to this feeling of um, it's the same thing that they talk about. Like it feels like death. Like when that little sound uh, plays that Mark Snow came up with in the early days of the X Files. That sounds like um, like a like a like a tuning fork mixed with uh, like an alien singing opera. I don't know how to describe it. It's pretty strange. It's a strange it's sound. <laughs> but it's, Mark Snow just invents these weird sounds to, to uh, help you understand the emotion of the X-Files because the emotion of the X-Files is without words often. There are no words for, for, these, for these types of things a lot of the time. But there is definitely a feeling that, that you can feel that is like dread, that is like this thing that Briggs describes of, uh, you know, uh, great bloody death Mm -hmm. (sighs) well that's gonna do it for squeeze we still have a lot to talk about for mr tombs uh the good news is we have a whole other episode coming next week we're gonna wrap up the the eugene victor tombs tale um lots to talk about still uh you know a lot of great stuff it's it's a it's a fun time it's a fun time to be exploring all these serial killers on the show especially this one yeah this one's very interesting all right, well, thank you for joining us here on The K-Files. I'm Katie. You can find me at K-Moles on social media. And I'm Krizali. You can find me at Krizali on all social medias. Yep. We're coming at you from hollyredux.com, guys. Thank you for watching. The truth is already here. See you guys. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, follow us on all social medias, and even check out our store, 
by clicking one of the links on the side. See you later.